Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jay Cruz and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna talk about stacking drives. So I feel like I have a very simplistic approach to stacking drives. Early on in my career, I was very big on finding one pedal or one product to do a specific thing and I depended on that pedal or product to get that thing done. Meaning, I didn't really stack drives too often unless I really, really needed to. Like for example, if I showed up at an event or a gig and I had two drive pedals and I didn't have a distortion pedal, then ideally I would think of a way to stack those two pedals so that I can make a very distorted sound. I know that you think that's common sense, everyone does that, but not really. See, back in 2005, 2007, rock music was very, very popular, and there was a very driven sound that was very, very specific sounding, and it was more than just overdrive pedals stacked together. It was a distorted sound, a modern day distortion. Two overdrives stacked together didn't always work. Fast forward to today, I don't use nearly as much gain as I used to. In fact, comparatively, I probably use no gain at all. A huge part of my sound today consists of not just one drive, not even just two drives, but actually three drives and a secret pedal altogether that's not really secret, but it's something that I do that a lot of guitarists don't do. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I stack my drives and get all of the bass tones that you hear me get in all of my music and in these videos. So before we get started in showing you actual tones, I've talked about this stuff in other videos, but it's always worth mentioning. Stacking drives isn't just dependent on the drive pedals themselves, but it's also dependent on the player, how they favor specific frequencies, the guitars that they use, the amps that they use, so on and so forth. In this video, I'm just gonna talk about the drives themselves and a few things that I personally do that contribute to that tone that you're hearing from me on a weekly basis. First and foremost is actually my guitar. This is a Nash T52, very clearly a Telecaster style guitar. My guitar naturally sounds a little more mid-range focused because it's a Telecaster. The other thing that I always have on, and this is what I referred to in the beginning of this video, which is kind of the secret to my tone, and that's compression. I never turn my compressor off. Though that is becoming more of a popular trend in today's modern day guitarist, it's not been a popular thing for a long time. So to give you a better understanding of what my guitar sounds like, this is with compression on. Like I said, I always have compression. In this video, I'm not gonna put delay and reverb on, even though I really, really want to. I'm not gonna do it. And this is what my guitar sounds like with just compression on. So I'm driving the amp quite a bit, but I'm not distorting the amp. It's giving me a nice bass clean tone. As you can hear, I'm already in that mid-range frequency. So when I add drives, I want that to complement. I want it to add a little bit of beefiness, but I don't want to get lost in a mix. So I tend to favor drive pedals that are known for mid-range frequencies or drive pedals that are known for being a little more on the transparent side. The industry has always recognized this pedal right here, J Chest Morning Glory, as being the industry standard for a transparent drive. Here are the settings that I'm currently using, and I'm gonna add that to the compression right now. That's the Morning Glory pedal. Now the other pedal that I have on my pedal board is the Tumnus by Wampler. This pedal is emulating a very famous, outrageously priced pedal that's out in the market right now called the Klon. I've never owned one, but it doesn't stop me from loving this pedal for simply the way it sounds. This pedal manages to still allow your tone to cut through, so it kind of falls into the category of transparent drive. However, it adds a very thick beefiness to your signal. Now, FYI, when I switch on this pedal and when I start stacking my drives, I tend to go back to my bridge pickup here, at least on my Telecaster. Um, it's not that I can't use the other pickups, but as I get more aggressive, I wanna get more focused, and so I go to the bridge. That's another tip about stacking drives. For me personally, I think more clarity is more necessary as you stack drives because drive pedals can be a little thick and muddy sounding the more and more drive you add. So now let's hear what the tumness sounds like. Again, compression going into the tumness. <laughs> So 
So right away you heard my first sound, which is my clean sound, just compression. Then you heard my first stage, which is the morning glory. And now my second stage, which is just the tumness. You can still hear the clarity in my signal. You can still hear the guitar sound. You can still hear every note that I'm playing. It's not oversaturated. But now what's gonna happen when I stack these two pedals? Well, let's see. <laughs> So what you hopefully heard was a more saturated, thicker sound that yes, had gain on it, but it didn't feel like the gain was overwhelming. I don't feel like I'm losing control of that gain. I'm not getting any unwanted feedback or even those woofy sort of tones, those overtones that you can get when you sort of saturate your guitar signal too much and maybe you have a little too much bottom end. I still get clarity out of it, but enough gain to sort of push the music when I needed to. Again, compression has been on the entire time, so technically I'm actually stacking three pedals right now. But now my solo tone, and that's where I add a pedal that I've been using for years and years and years, and that is the Ibanez Tube Screamer. I've either had the Ibanez Tube Screamer or versions of it, on my pedal board since I could remember. I actually stacked this pedal on top of the compressor, the Morning Glory, and the Tumness. So that means I have four pedals on at the very same time. <laughs> that do very different things, but work together collectively. I think it takes a while to make two drives work together. It takes an understanding of what that drive is actually good at. Some drive pedals don't work well with others. Some drive pedals seem to have been created to work well with others. For example, the Tube Screamer just seems to be the pedal that is meant to tone shape. It was meant to sort of complement other pedals and amps, right? As I mentioned before, in the past, I would favor using individual pedals to do what I need them to do. For example, years ago, I probably would have wanted a distortion pedal on my pedal board to cover my solo tone. But the more that I've gotten into my tone shaping journey, I realize I like the idea of stacking drives. It feels like I can adjust to my every single need. I think I've figured out a nice little formula for myself. I like a transparent drive. I like something that adds a little more thickness and mid range, but still allows my signal to be up front. And then I like a drive pedal that can tone shape a little bit. That can allow me to add a specific thing, usually mid range, cause I'm a mid range frequency kind of guy. And also add a little bit of drive if I needed to. And then I like a compressor that plays well with those kind of pedals because I want it to stay on all the time. I like the idea of the compressor sort of normalizing everything for me so that ultimately I can cultivate a sound that I personally feel not only sounds good, feels good to play, but cuts through a mix. And this method has really helped me to be satisfied even in a live situation, which is not easy. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it was informational as always. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I will try my best to get to them. If you want to email me some questions, you can do that too. My email address is listed below at jcruiseproject at gmail.com. You can also visit my website at jcruiseproject.org. If you haven't done so, please be sure to do all of the things that help me keep this channel alive and going like this video, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to hit the bell icon so you know exactly when I upload a video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.